Praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome to our Divine Healing School. I am glad that you chose to tune in tonight, and I believe, as I always do, that you're going to be blessed by what you hear. I believe that the Lord is going to open the eyes of people, that is, the eyes of their understanding, whoever it is that need it so that you can see this thing like God wants you to see it. Because you can have whatever God says you can have. You just need to know that he said you can have it. All the promises of God in him are yes 
and amen. Yea and amen, the King James says. Yea means yes, and amen means so be it. So every promise of God in him is yes, so be it. We're going to get into some further things in just a few moments. But I want to pray first. And then we'll do what we normally do. Uh, we make a, a confession over the word of God. And then we get into our discussion. So let's pray. Now my heavenly father, I thank you. Once again, for this opportunity to come before you. Thank you for the privilege to gather around the Word of God and to be fed the Word. Thank you for the Holy Ghost ministering this Word unto our spirits in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for everyone that is tuned in watching this. I trust the Holy Ghost to minister to their every need, to bring healing, to bring deliverance, to bring light, illumination, and revelation and understanding. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, I pray today that you would make me your mouthpiece. Cause the words of my mouth and even the thoughts of my mind, the meditations of my heart, not just to be acceptable in your sight, but to be that which is ordained of you, that you give me utterance today in the mighty name of Jesus. Now I thank you for it. I thank you for the anointing to teach the word. And I, I, I yield myself to that anointing. Thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for what it is doing now and what it will do in us, for us, to us, and even through us as we yield. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for all and we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Praise God. All right. Now lift your Bibles or devices or whatever it is and say with me, this is my Bible. It is the word of God. It is God speaking to me. His purpose is to bless me, to change me, and to be glorified through my life. Therefore, I set myself in agreement with his word by having a receptive heart and a readiness of mind to receive. And by being a doer of the word I hear, not a hearer only, I realize that obedience to God's word is essential in order to have God's best for my life. Amen. Praise God. I was going to uh, share some things last week on divine healing as a spiritual reality, which we did not get into because the Lord had me to minister on something else. And, uh, and if you missed that, I encourage you to go back and watch it on, on our YouTube channel um, last week's message some things that God shared with me or taught me or told me about healing praise God amen but this morning I was uh, thinking about I knew what I was going to be talking about uh, tonight as I, as I told you last time that we would get into this. And um, I was thinking about this message that I wanted to share today, tonight. Divine healing is a spiritual reality. And while I was thinking about that, 
the Lord really impressed something upon me to share with you pertaining to this. There is a lot of confusion, and this is what the Lord was dealing with me about today. There is confusion among many with, where it relates to healing. They hear scriptures quoted. They even read scriptures, like, some, like something we'll read tonight, where the Bible talks about he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities, and so forth. Chastised of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Now, people read that, and they hear that, but it's confusing to some people, many. And here is why. It's easy to say those words, but yet people are suffering with all kinds of physical conditions and problems, pains and sicknesses and diseases and everything. Years ago, uh, a friend of mine from another country visited um, the United States, and uh, he was, uh, I had him, he came as a guest when we were in North Carolina. And uh, he and I was traveling, and we were talking about healing a little bit, and I'm, I remember him saying this to me. He said, I'm a realist. These are his words. I'm a realist. And I'm not going to say that I'm healed when I have a headache. And I thought about that. And, um, and I realized, and, and I spoke to him, I said, there's things you just don't understand. He felt like if I say I, I'm healed and I have a headache, then I'm lying. And a lot of people think that. But that's not really the truth. The, the truth is, this that I'm telling you now, is that divine healing is a spiritual reality. The best way I can say it is divine healing is a spiritual reality that manifests in the physical. It, it, it manifests in the physical realm, but it's real, and it's already done in the spiritual realm. And we're going to look at a couple of things in a moment. But this is one of the things that confuses people. How can I say like, like that uh, friend of mine? And people don't understand. Say, how am I, am I going to say, I'm healed? Or how am I even going to say, I believe I'm healed? Or how am I going to say, I believe I receive healing when this head, my head is pounding? When, I, when I've been vomiting all day long, all night, last night. When I've not been able to sleep, tossing and turning in pain. And yet somebody wants me to say, that I believe I'm healed. See, there's two kinds of truth. One, one kind of truth, which is the type of truth that, um, let, me, let me change that. I'm, I, I didn't mean to say truth. Two kinds of truth, two kinds of knowledge is what I meant to say. Two kinds of knowledge. Um, and one of those things, one type of knowledge is sense knowledge. That's knowledge based on the senses. Now, now there, there is a knowledge of the word that's different because the word does not go by the senses. 
the word of God says what it says, and it is what it is, and it doesn't matter how you feel. How you feel does not change what God says you are. Imagine for a moment waking up in the morning. You know you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And one morning you just woke up and you didn't feel as spiritual, if you will, as you did days ago. Let's say you had a, a tremendous experience when you came to the Lord. And it was just great. The power of God was all over you. The presence of God was on you. You could hardly control your emotions. You worshiped. You praised. You may have danced or shouted and ran around and praised God or spoke in tongues, whatever you did. And then after a period of time, you don't feel that same thing. So one day you wake up in the morning and you don't feel like you did when you had that experience. Do you say, well, you know what? I'm not saved. Because I don't feel saved. Because you associate saved with the experience that you had. So, but we don't we don't do that. We don't get up and say, "I'm not. I don't think I'm saved because I don't feel saved." Baby Christians may do that sometimes, but those of us that's a little more mature and know better. But it's the same thing. People do the same thing with healing. They judge their healing on the basis of their feeling or their experience. I told somebody some time ago that they would never change what I believe, that they couldn't do it. They, they said something like, uh, I just need to get you straightened out on this healing. And I said to them, you don't have a snowball's chance in the lake of fire of changing what I believe about healing. And I say with that now. No matter what happened to you, no matter, no matter what happened to me, no matter what happened to somebody else I've seen something happen to, none of that moves me. I don't believe what I believe on the basis of some experience. I believe what I believe because it's the Word of God. And I believe that the word of God is true. I heard a preacher say many, many years ago, the simplest definition of faith is believing that God told the truth. Just believe that God told the truth. When I read what it says, God told the truth. If I am convinced that God told the truth, and if I stand on that, I'm going to have what I need to have. I'm going to have what I'm believing for. I'm going to have what God said I can have. Because I refuse to allow something that happened to change what I believe. A minister, a well-known minister died some years ago, actually back in um, 2000, probably 2003. And uh, someone asked me, if um, you know, they want to know how if I was affected, you know, if, if what I believe was affected by this person's death, because they were very strong in teaching healing, and faith, and so forth, and I said no. They, them dying did not affect me at all, as far as what I believe, because I'm not basing what I believe on what happens to somebody else. Well, what's something happened to you? I've had things happen to me. Did that change what I believe? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. It is not based on that. Now, some people say, you just won't face reality. I won't face what you call reality. I am facing reality. And the reality is this. 
Remember what Jesus said in John 17, 17, when he, in, when he was praying to his Father? He said, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. I thought about this recently, how the Bible says that it is impossible for God to lie. And I was asking some people recently, I said, why do you suppose that it is impossible for God to lie? Because his word is truth. Everything that comes out of his mouth is truth. He can't lie because his word is truth. Jesus said his word is truth. It is truth. And if his word is truth, it can't be anything else but truth. It's not a mixture. It's not partial truth and partial lie or partial truth and partial untruth or partial truth and partial fable or partial truth and partial fairy tale. It is truth. If he said it, it is true. If he said it, it's true. If it came out of his mouth, it is true. Jesus said, thy word is truth. So if his word is truth, it's truth right now. It was truth yesterday, and it'll be truth tomorrow. It'll be truth a hundred years from now. It wasn't, doesn't matter how long time goes, it'll still be true. But people have a problem because they have sense, knowledge, faith. What is sense, knowledge, faith? That's the kind of faith that Thomas had. Jesus had visited the disciples after his resurrection. They were gathered together and Jesus, you know, came in the midst of them. And, uh, but Thomas wasn't there. And when the other disciples told Thomas that Jesus had appeared to him, Thomas said, except I see his na the nail prints in his hands, put my finger in the nail prints, and thrust my hand into his side, in other words, where that spear was stuck in Jesus' side. Listen to what he said. I will not believe. I will not believe. So some days later, it was actually eight days later, Jesus came again. This time Thomas was there. And Jesus came in the midst of them. And he told Thomas, he said, Thomas, come and take your finger and stick it in my nail prints and thrust your hand in my side. See, the Lord heard what he said, even though he was not there physically at the time. And he said, handle me and see if a, a, a spirit... He's a spirit that not flesh and bone as you see me have. And then Thomas put his fingers in the nail prints where, Jesus, where the nails were in Jesus' hand. He put his hand in his side and then he said, oh, my Lord, my Lord. He acknowledged that he was Lord then. My Lord and my God. What did Jesus say? Thomas, because you see me, because you see, you believe. But then he went on to say, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Did you hear that? Some of you believe you're healed because you can see a difference. Blessed are those who believe it without seeing the difference. 
Some of you believe because you feel the difference. What did Jesus say? Blessed are those who believe without feeling the difference. Now we want to feel different. We want the pain to go and all of that, and that will happen. But that is not what we should base our believing on. So that's what I want to get over to you today because some people, like that friend of mine who said, I'm a realist. I'm not going to say my, I'm healed and I know I have a headache. But I know he didn't understand. But let's go into a couple of things here. First of all, let's notice this. John 4 and 24. In John 4 and 24, the Bible says, God is a spirit. I want you to get that. God is a spirit. So you can't see him. He is a spirit. And now listen, listen. God is who is a spirit, made this natural world. And how did he make it? How did God, who is a spirit, make this natural three-dimensional world that we live in now? How did he do that? He did it with his word. He did it with his word. He didn't take his hands and mold the earth and all those things. He didn't do it like that. He didn't need to do it that way. He did it with his word. God, who is a spirit, made this natural world with his word. The seen, that is, that which we seen, who can see, was made by that which we cannot see. And that's important because in relation to what, especially in relation to what we're talking about. God, who is unseen by us, made and created everything that you and I can see. Hebrews 11 and 3 the New King James Version says it this way. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed. How? By the word of God. Listen. So that things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Isn't that something? Think about that for a minute. God who is invisible, made everything that is visible. And God is invisible, as I already said. And, and uh, the scripture says so in 1 Timothy 1, 17, says now, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17, says, Now to the king eternal, immortal, invisible, to God, who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Hebrews 11, 27 says, By faith Moses forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. See, God is invisible. The fact that the seen was made by the unseen is very important regarding healing. And in fact, regarding anything else we've received from God. And here's why. Everything that God created was created with his word. Everything that he created, he created with his word. Psalm 33, verses 6 and 7 says, By the word of the Lord. By the word of the Lord. 
the heavens were made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. I want to read that again. Psalm 33, verses 6 and 7. By the word of the Lord. When, when you see the word like in the scriptures, when it says Lord, and it's all caps, it's talking about, I mean, Jehovah. By the word of the Lord, or by the word of Jehovah, the heavens were made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Listen, he gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap. He lays up the deep in storehouses. Verse 9 says, For he spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. Praise God. Isaiah chapter 44 verse 24 states, Thus says the Lord, Jehovah, your Redeemer, and he who formed you from the womb, I am the Lord. There's that word again in all kinds, I'm Jehovah, who makes all things, who stretches out the heavens all alone, who spreads abroad the earth by myself. God did it. God did it. Now, um, he says, he is the Lord. He stretched out the heavens. He did it alone. He spreads abroad the earth by himself. Let's look at another passage. Isaiah 45 and 18 states, For thus says the Lord, that's Jehovah again, who created the heavens, who is God. Let me, see, let me look at that. Let's read, let's read that again. For thus says the Lord, who created the heavens, who is God, who formed the earth and made it, who has established it, who did not create it in vain, who formed it to be inhabited, I am the Lord, Jehovah, and there is no other. Isaiah 42 and 5 says, Thus says the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread forth the earth and that which comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it, and spirit to those who walk on it. So not only did God make everything with his word, but everything that he made is being maintained by his word. Did you hear that? Not only did he make everything, it's being maintained. You know, the sun still rise and set all the time. And it's done by his, by his word. He's maintaining everything. You don't have to wake up one morning and say, I wonder if the sun going to be up. You may not see it because of clouds, but it's there. It doesn't matter. It's all there. Everything is being maintained by his word. That's extremely important. And I'll tell you why in a, minute, in a couple of minutes here. But go to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. It says, For by him all things were created. Really, Jesus is a creator. For by him all things were created, listen, that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible. Do you know there are some things that's been made? that you can't see on earth and, and in the heavens. Or let's say it a different way, earth and the sky. He said whether they are invisible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things 
were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. That means all things are held together by him. Praise God. So it's all held together. Now why is that so important? When you understand the word of God holds things together. When you understand the word of God, whatever he says is true. When you understand whatever he says happens, whether you can feel it or not, when, whatever, when you get a hold of that, then when you hear what he said in his word about you and about your well-being, about your physical condition, your spiritual condition, or any other condition you find yourself in, you can rely upon it. You can rest upon it. You can put your life on it because it is true. Now, um, let me just give you a, a, little, a little something else here. Remember in Genesis, Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, I love, I love this passage. It says, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night shall not cease. Let's, let's read that again. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. I heard of this politician a couple of years ago. You know, these politicians, God bless them and help them. Many of them. They just push whatever agenda they want to push. And it doesn't matter about them telling a lie. They just push the agendas that they want to push. Now this particular politician made this statement about, quote, global warming. And uh, she said that we were not even going to be here. We were not going to, if we don't do something about global warming, we're not going to be here in, in, in 12 years. That was a couple of years ago. We're not going to be here in 12 years. They said that global warming is an existential threat. That is a lie. I said that is a lie. Do you understand what they're saying when they say something is an existential threat? They're saying that your existence is threatened. That's a lie. Oh, we got global warming. Listen, what the, what, what the Bible say? As long as the earth remains, we're going to have cold and heat. We're going to have winter and summer. We're going to have day and night. It shall not cease. Don't believe all the hype. Read your Bible and believe what the Word of God says. Yes, the Word is the this world, this earth is going to be going to pass away, but it ain't coming from global warming. It's not going. You're not going to stop things from happening because you know you don't. Uh, if you buy stop not driving your car and and uh, you know. Not using fossil fuels and all, all this is nonsense, pure nonsense. And if you believe it, you drank the Kool-Aid. But let's move on. I just wanted to throw that in there. Isaiah 55, Isaiah 50, another one of my favorite ver uh, scriptures. Isaiah 55 verses 10 and 11 states, now listen to this. And this goes back to what I was saying about why important, why it's so important to understand that the world is held together by the Word of God. 
is also important that God, who is a spirit, spoke everything that there is into this world or into existence. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Here's what the Lord says. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. When God sent his word of healing for you, he says, it's not going to return unto him void. He said it's going to accomplish what he pleased. He said it's going to prosper in the thing for which he sent it. The scripture says he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their troubles. God is a spirit, as I've already said, and everything that we receive from him, we receive from his spirit. This invisible being that you and I can't put our eyes on, just because you can't put your eyes on him doesn't mean he's not there. He's there. I can hold something under this desk in my hand and you can't see it because I'm holding it in my hand under the desk. You can't see it. Does that mean it's not real? No. Does that mean it's not there? No. It just means you cannot see it. It's invisible to you. But it's just as real as you are. God is as real, more real than you. God is more real than that chair you're sitting in. God is more real than that device you're holding. God is more real than anything you can think about. But we don't relate to him from a physical standpoint. We pray to him. We use our mouth, that's physical, and so forth. We raise our hands to give him praise. We bow down before him. We kneel down before him in worship or in praise. But we don't see him. We don't feel him. We don't see him. And you don't really feel God. When you think you're feeling God, you're not really feeling God. What you are experiencing is is the effect of, of God's presence. You're not feeling God himself. You're feeling the effect of his presence. Now, we use the term, yeah, I feel God. Oh, man, I feel God on me. You're really feeling the effect of his presence. His presence is there. But we don't relate to God from a physical standpoint. Amen. So God is a spirit, and everything that we receive from him, we receive from his spirit. Now listen carefully, including divine healing. This is what I wanted to get to. Including divine healing. Divine healing is a spiritual reality that manifests in the physical realm. It manifests in the physical realm. Now, now I'm going to read one, another passage and let us see healing from God's perspective. How does he see us where healing is concerned? Isaiah 53 Four and five, surely he has borne our griefs. 
that that word grief is talking about our sicknesses and and weaknesses. The the uh, amplifies is sicknesses, weaknesses, and distresses. But it's talking about our our diseases and so forth. He has borne. That word means he has carried it, taken it, and taken it a distance away from you. He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. The Hebrew word that's translated sorrows here in the King James Bible is talking about pain. Yeah, so he he borne our griefs, our sicknesses, our diseases. And he carried our pains. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. That means he was chastised so we could have peace. And with his stripes, we are healed. With his stripes, we are healed. When you take that truth, that when, that's how God sees it. Stop calling yourself sick. Stop taking hold of all these things. You remember what Jesus said? Take no thought for your life saying. Thoughts may come and thoughts may go, but thoughts not put in the words or action or die unborn. But just as soon as something, you start feeling something, the thought comes, I'm coming down with so-and-so. When that thought comes, don't say it. Jesus said, take no thought for your life saying. Now he was talking about what you eat or what you drink, but the, but the principle is still the same. This is how you take a thought. By saying it. A thought may cross your mind, but that don't mean you have to speak it. Or say whatever it is that's coming into your mind. Just as easy as you can say, oh, I'm so sick, I'm so sick, I'm so sick, I don't know what to do. Just as easily as you can say that, you can say, himself took my infirmities and bare my sicknesses. I believe the word of God. I believe that I receive healing. I was talking uh, a few weeks ago about uh, receiving healing through exercising your authority over the enemy. You know, you have authority over the devil and over the sickness and over the disease. You have authority. What do you do? You ever have a pain just seem like it comes out of nowhere in, in your body. A ache, a pain, a, what, how do you handle it? What do you do? Do you ever just stop and say, oh no, I will not have pain in my body. I don't have to have it because the word of God says, that he himself took my infirmity and bear my sicknesses. Do you ever say, I command my body to line up with the word of God, which declares that himself took my infirmity and bear my sickness. Do you ever say, no sickness, no disease, no pain, and no discomfort of any kind has any right in my body. 
But because according to the word of God, I am healed. So I believe that it is, even as it was told me in his word. Therefore, I resist, reject, renounce, and stand against pain, sickness. You will not come into my body. Praise God. You know, you know, I, if, I, if I'm around somebody, they start sneezing and coughing and like coming. You know what I say? I open my mouth. I don't have, I'm not talking to the person. I'm making a declaration based upon what I believe. And, and I say this, and, I, and I've done it. I say, uh, I am anointed. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is in me and is upon me. Every disease germ or virus germ or anything that touches my body dies immediately for the anointing kills it. The yoke is destroyed because of the anointing. I believe that. And here's something else I say. I, I, in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus over my body with no sickness, no pain, no disease, no demon or entity of Satan can cross the bloodline. Remember when uh, in, in Exodus, when, the, Lord, when the, uh, the children of Israel, the Lord told them, there was the destroyer, the angel of death, the destroyer came through to kill it, the firstborn of every person, of every household. But the Lord told the Israelites what to do. He told them to kill this lamb and so forth. They had to put the blood in the, in the basin and they took hyssop and dipped it in the blood and they put it on the doorposts and uh, on the lentil, the thing going across at the top and on the sides and they stayed in the house with the door closed. And when the destroyer came, he couldn't touch them because he saw the blood. The destroyer couldn't cross the bloodline. When we plead the blood in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus. I do that when I get in the car and I've passed that to a lot of our people. I get in my car to go somewhere. I say, in the name of Jesus. Sometimes I say it before I start the car up. Uh, but, but I say it. In the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over this vehicle. If I get in somebody else's car, I say it. Because I'm in that car. I say, if they don't know it, I, if they don't know to say it, I'll share it with them, but, but I may say it, whether they say it or not. Well, I, I, I won't need to if they say it, but if they don't say it, I'm saying it. What do you say? I, in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus over this vehicle. Therefore, it is covered by his blood. Bumper to bumper, side to side, top and bottom, inside and outside. Every part, working or non-working, nothing or no one shall bump it, dent it, scratch it, or damage it in any way whatsoever. And, and it will not bump, dent, scratch, or do damage to anything or anyone, including people, animals, or property. It shall pass over to my destinations and back home safely without incident, in the name of Jesus. When I get on an airplane, I mean the airlines, when I'm walking in there, I'm, when I'm walking in there or getting on the plane, I say in the name of Jesus, 
I plead the blood of Jesus over this entire airplane and it shall pass over. It shall pass over. You know, even when I fly my own little plane, I always said, every time I go up to fly, I say, in the name of Jesus, I fly and I don't die. I'm, the plane ain't going to just fall out the sky. I know how to fly. And it ain't going to fall out. It's made to fly. It's not going to fall out, just fall out the sky. And it's going to come on the ground when I want it to come on the, on the ground under my control. I'm not going to have a collision with another airplane or anything. This is how I think and this is how I believe. And when I do that on the airlines, when I get and things start, you ever been on a plane that start shaking and bumping and, uh, you know, and some turbulence and all of that? I don't get afraid. I'm covered. I'm covered. I'm not falling out and falling, you know, grabbing on the stuff, trying to hold, oh, 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 Jesus, please help us. Oh, oh Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I took it that when I got on there. I believe the word. And just like, see, when you, when you, when you do what I was just talking about, and I'm going to do some, a lot of teaching on this, uh, not during this, but uh, in, in our services in church. I'm going to be doing this, some teaching on this. The Lord directed me to do some more teaching about authority and the blood of Jesus and all of that because people need to understand it. That was, that was my, my way. When I, when I say in the name of Jesus, when I get in that car and I do that, that's my way of taking that blood. And I'm using my words. What the Bible say? They overcame him. Who? The devil. How'd they overcome him? By the blood of the lamb. That's the blood I'm pleading. By the blood of the lamb. And by the word of their testimony. That's how you overcome. Well, the word of your testimony is that which you are speaking. Your confession, if you will. When, when I say, this shall pass over to my destination and all that, nothing, nothing is covered, bumper to bumper, that's my testimony. I plead the blood. And I'm giving my testimony, and I overcome. And it works every day, all the time. I don't go anywhere without doing it. Amen. When I'm going to bed, I say in the name, before I go to bed at night, in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus over this entire house and property, every square inch of it where no demon or entity of Satan can cross it. And then I say, and in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus over the dwelling places of my children, my grandchildren, my family, my church family, and their families. Amen. Praise God. Our churches, both here in the United States, and and in Africa, praise God, and over their families, and I expect it to work just like I'm saying it. And I believe these things when I say it, and it's the same way I handle something and something come against my body. I say, oh no, 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 I'm not going to have that in my body. You don't have a right. Who are you talking to? I'm talking to the thing that's coming against my body. And, and wait a minute, I'm not always talking to a demon. It may not be no demon. There are can have, they're natural um, problems too. There comes something that come against your body. Every day you have an upset stomach, that doesn't mean a demon is there. You can just have a natural, something that's in the natural. I'm coming against the thing. If it's pain, I'm coming against it. If it's a devil, I don't care what it is. I'm coming against it. Come against it. In the name of Jesus. 
Now, since the Lord wanted me to say this before I close, as I close, because I, I, I'm receiving something by the Holy Ghost, there's someone that w watching me having difficulty. You, you, you can't sleep at night. You're having, you're having problems. You lay down and you, you really can't sleep. And you toss and turn and so forth. And you lay there. Sometimes you get up, but back up out of the bed, try to go do something to make yourself, try to get yourself tired. No. Um, you come against that thing in the name of Jesus. Say, in the name of Jesus, I come against insomnia and sleeplessness. He gives his beloved sleep, and I'm his beloved, and I'm going to sleep. And I come against anything and everything in the mighty name of Jesus that's trying to keep me from sleeping or disturbing my peace. I come against it now in the mighty name of Jesus. And now I lay me down to sleep. Praise God. Hallelujah. And give God praise for it. Amen. And expect it. Expect it. And I tell you what, if you're having something feel like is that feel like I'm gonna start praying. I'm not talking about begging God for something, just 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 worship. 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 Laying down there. Watch it. You'll fall asleep. That's the remedy for something. The Lord wanted me to minister to somebody, whoever you are. Now you got it. Praise God. Well, we're going to come back. Listen, let me tell you this. I was going to, uh, this was supposed to be the last month uh, of for healing school. But I'm going to stretch it out one more month. I'm going to go on to, um, through January as well. Because there are a couple of things, some sacred cows that must be put to death. Things that I believe is stopping people from receiving the healing that God says is theirs. Jesus died for everybody to be saved. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's what the Bible teaches. And yet people are dying, going to hell every single day. Not because that's his will. Well, people are sick and can't get well and all this. Not because it's his will. Not because it's his will. Because they don't know what rights they have. If you don't know your rights, the enemy will take advantage of you. Praise God. I believe that blessed somebody. I believe it blessed somebody. And I want to thank you for tuning in. And I want to encourage you to tune in next week. In the mighty name of Jesus. Until then, the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, and the Lord cause you to walk in victory every day in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.